Hey guys, Jason here with RWB NetSec, and I'm coming to you today with another boot to root challenge, and this one is called Skydog CTF. You can download this one from Vulnhub, and I will have the link to it in the description below, so uh, go ahead and grab that when you get a chance. Um, you're also going to need the EXIF tool. So um, I, I don't believe that by default comes with Kali. So uh, I will also provide a link to that. So download that and get it set up in Kali. So this challenge itself was, was kind of fun for me. Um, as we start working through it, you're going to notice a, a theme that starts coming out. There are a total of six flags that you're supposed to get, and each one of the flags sort of builds off the one before it. So don't forget, if you guys enjoy the video, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and uh, I would appreciate it if you spread the word to your friends and have them to check it out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with Skydog CTF. All right, so you know uh, we, we always need to start off by finding the IP address of our target machine. And of course, I'm going to be using NetDiscover to do this. So let's go ahead and pull up a terminal window. And let me just minimize this. So I'm going to run NetDiscover. And it looks like our target is going to be dot one oh three. So let me just clear this out. And then the next thing I'm going to do is just run a, a kind of a basic uh, in map version scan against this just to see what comes up. three. All right, you can see here now we've got two ports that are showing that are open, 22 and 80. Uh, normally what I would do after this is to run another in-map scan and have it to scan all 65,535 ports just to make sure that there wasn't anything uh, sitting out there. Sometimes administrators will uh, take a service and put it on a different port than maybe what maybe what it should be running at just to kind of throw you off so I always scan all ports but I've already done that for this machine and I know these are the only two that are open the next thing that I'm gonna do is run another in-map scan and see if we can get more information on these two services so I'm just gonna do a TAC capital A TAC P and then just specify those two ports So we see on port 22, we have open SSH version 6.6.1 .6 running. And then on port 80, uh, of course, we've got Apache 247. And then it looks like we've got a robots.txt file, which actually contains several entries. So that's something that we're going to be checking out here in just a little bit. So the next thing that I would do then, since we have port 80 open, I'm going to open a browser go to the address and see if there's actually a web page that's showing here uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clear the screen and uh, one other quick thing to note I've got a folder created on here and this is something that you'll want to do just to keep track of all your notes uh, just make a folder specifically for this challenge that way you can keep track of everything so I'm gonna go ahead and change into that directory So then we're just going to open a browser and go to that address and see uh, see if anything comes up there. All right, so let's open a browser. Go to our address here. Three. And it looks like we have, there's nothing here except for this image uh, the CTF image 
Now, if you've seen any of the other videos, you'll know that there are a couple of things that I always like to check uh, when I'm dealing with a website or web, web application. Uh, one of the things is to view the page source. Sometimes a developer will come in here and leave comments uh, that may actually give you clues on how to solve a challenge or something. And even in real life, uh, there have been times where I've seen a developer will leave a comment that he, they don't expect you know the average user to look in here, look at the page source, and they'll leave things like passwords and everything in here. So I always get in the habit of checking the page source and make sure that there's nothing hidden that you can use to your advantage. So we can see here there's nothing really in the source except for the image tag uh, to that image. Skydog.com CTF JPEG. So I'm going to close out of here. Uh, one of the other things that we always check, especially when you're working with, with these kinds of challenges, these boot to root challenges, uh, sometimes the author of the challenge will hide information within the metadata of an image. And that's why I had you to download the EXIF tool, or we're going to be using that here. Um, I've already downloaded the image, so I'm going to run EXIF tool quick. And we'll see if there's anything hidden there. So, And I've got mine stored under the opt directory. And it was skydogcon ctf. All right. And you can see right here, this XP comment. We have one of our flags here that was hidden within the image. So you're going to want to copy this and save it out to a, uh, I would just recommend saving it to a text file. Because we will be coming back to this. That looks like that's all that's contained within the image itself. So we can go ahead and clear this out. So we have our first flag. Now let's go back to the browser. Now if you remember from our in-map scan, this contained the robots.txt file. And we see right off the bat here we have another flag. So there's a second flag that we've already got. Now this robots.txt file contains a lot of entries. And this is not typical. Most of them, if anything, they just contain just a few entries in it. But I guess this is just part of the challenge to throw, throw kind of more fluff at you. So we're going to need to work with this and see if see if there's anything within this robots file that's actually useful for us. All right. Looks like I actually had a couple of extra lines in it. I should have verified that file before I ran it, but it still works. Uh, you can see it came back. These are all the URLs that actually came back with the 200 response. Uh, and I know from, like I would manually try to go to one of these URLs and all it would do is go back to the home page with that initial image that we saw. The only thing that was different here was this CTEC directory. So that's the one that we're going to check out. So uh, we'll go back to the browser and go to that directory and see what comes up with it. All right, so let's go back to our browser. We're going to go to this CTEC directory and see what it contains. Go to CTEC, and we have another image. And this time, when when I first saw this image, I immediately recognized it. Uh, these characters are from a movie called Sneakers, uh, which I actually watched. I guess it's probably been maybe about a year or so ago. Uh, I thought it was a really good movie, so check that out when you get a chance. And we also see here it says too many secrets. Now this is another thing that was from the movie. Uh, you can make it, actually make an anagram here that turns into CTEC astronomy. So that could be another clue for us. Let's view the page source quick and see what it contains. All right, so we have this bit of JavaScript here. 
And the thing that stands out is this text here, NSA Agent Abbott, a.k.a. Darth Vader. And I recognize this one because Agent Abbott is another character from the Sneakers movie. And uh, he was played by James Earl Jones, uh, hence the other clue here for Darth Vader. So we need to keep that in mind. That's another clue for us, I believe. The other thing that's contained here, and we have another directory to look at, this astronomy directory. And you can see, like I said from the beginning, each one of the flags and the clues kind of builds off the one before it. So let's close this out, and then we're going to check out the, um, the astronomy directory and see what it contains. All right, so let's go to this astronomy directory. And now we see a directory listing with two files showing. We have our image file that was on that page. And then we have this zip file, whistler.zip. And Whistler is actually another character from the Sneakers movie. So let's go ahead and download this. Uh, let's. Yeah, that's fine. So let's see if we can unzip it. And it requires a password. But we don't have any active passwords to use. Um, it looks like the zip file contains two, two files. One is going to be another flag. And then we have this text file here. So Kali actually contains a tool that you can use to try to crack into zip files. And it's just called fcrackzip. So let's run that here. Let me clear the screen out for you. F crack zip. I'm going to do attack capital D, attack P, and I'm just going to use the rock you word list against it. User share word list, rock you, and then attack you, whistler.zip. Wow, okay, that fast. So it looks like the password for the zip file is your mother. So now let's try to unzip it again. And now we should have, we got flag.txt and this quest to find Cosmo. Let's cut out the flag.txt first. You can see it's just another MD5 hash. And if we cut out the quest to find Cosmo, we can see another, here's another clue. Time to break out those binoculars and start doing some OSINT. So it looks like we have some more research to do outside of the actual machine. So when it comes to performing open source intelligence gathering, which is what OSINT uh, stands for, there are a couple of trains of thought that we can look at here. One is going to be, uh, are we looking for something that maybe could give us possible directory names that we need to go to? Or um, two, we could be looking for something that we can use as usernames and passwords because uh, remember we still have port 22 SSH open and I suspect it you know we're gonna have to log in to that at some point I, that that will play part of the challenge so looking outside of the machine open source intelligence gathering means going away not not actually directly touching the target but looking out on the open internet to see what information you can find um, again if you guys are, are doing pen testing for a living uh, you'll know that you'll you'll be doing open source intelligence gathering on your clients at, from time to time. You know, going out and hitting things like Google and uh, Yahoo, all like social media sites, things like that, to try to 
get a bigger picture of the people that you're going against at your target. So we're going to be looking here um, a couple of places. We're going to do a Google search. And since the theme, all the clues so far are pointing to sneakers. So it looks like the, the O scent that we need to gather is going to revolve around stuff that has to do with the movie sneakers. Now, I don't have internet access with this. I've only got it set up for um, host only. But I did go ahead and pull up. Uh, you can see I just had done a quick Google search for sneakers movie. And I just picked these top two, the first two links that came up for it. So we've got uh, the entry on the IMDB. And then we've got the Wikipedia article. So what I did for these... Um, and this actually took me a little bit to go through. I've, and, I've, of course, I've edited part of this stuff out just for sake of time on the video. But I went through and looked for uh, maybe anything specific that stood out. You can see here you've got things like the, the names of the cast. Um, you get kind of a, a brief storyline. So what I began to do... You can see I've got I've already got files uh, created already, but this wiki IMDb text file that I created, I went through the IMDb page and let me just pull up the Wikipedia page quick. Uh, I read through everything on here and picked out uh, specific words to the movie that would have significance, um, and you can see here. In this text file that I created, the the kinds of things that I pulled out. So it would be like characters' names, um, let me see, um, things like NSA. Um, of course, see, take astronomy. We'd already seen that before. Uh, the too many secrets. So I just pulled out things like this. I just created a word list. And another thing that I did, uh, I believe it's this sneakers.txt. I created this file too. It's kind of basically the same thing. But I wanted to, um, like I said, I know there's there are better ways to do this. I mean, you could, you could, I guess you could use tools like Cool and some other things to, that would actually scrape the website and pull these words out but I just wanted to manually go through so I didn't have to uh, later go, be, go in and weed out some of the more common words I, you know I didn't want things like next and day and things like that to have to cut out of my script so this <clears throat> excuse me goodness I'm losing my voice so this part of it did actually take me a little bit but I went through and created these lists and the first thing that I wanted to do, once I got that list created, uh, since it's possible that we are looking for additional directory names, then I wanted to run this list through Durbuster just to see if anything else came up. So let me go ahead and minimize this. And we're going to run Durbuster right now using one of those scripts, uh, those text files, and see if we get any additional directory. So if you go up to uh, Applications, web app analysis and then web crawlers and just uh, open up Durbuster. And then here we're just going to put our target address. Three. And then I'm just going to browse to our list. Uh, Actually, I was, where did I save that? Documents, Skydog. It's wiki, imdb.txt. We're just going to use that. And I'm going to leave the rest of the options the same and just click on Start. And you can see that it is coming up with additional directories and files. Of course, the CTEC we've already been to. Uh, the CTEC Astronomy we've already seen, but the Playtronics is one that we haven't seen. And it looks like there is another flag that's contained within that directory, along with a PCAP file. 
So I'm going to go ahead and... St uh, oh, it's already finished. So let's go ahead and go to this Playtronics directory. And of course, here are the files that Durbuster found. We have this flag.txt. So if we open it up, it's just another MD5 hash. Now, one thing that I'll, I'll go ahead and say here uh, the author of this challenge mentioned that these were MD5 hashes. And from my experience in working on other machines, a lot of times the MD5 hashes can actually be passwords and things that you can use as part of the challenge. So that's why I told you to make sure that you make note of this because that is going to come into play here in a little bit. If we go back now and we can see that we've got this PCAP file, which which means that we're going to have to open this up and analyze it because I'm sure there'll be uh, there's another clue contained within this uh, PCAP. All right, to, so to examine this PCAP file, we're going to just use Wireshark to do that. So let me get Wireshark open here. Let's clear the screen again. Just make sure that you've already got that PCAP file downloaded and saved locally. Yeah, that's fine. And then once you get Wireshark open, just go up to File and Open. Navigate to where you saved that PCAP. Just open it up. And you can see we've actually, there. there's a lot of packets here, a lot of traffic going on. Uh, just to save a little bit of time. Hopefully. I went through these, um, and the one that kind of stood out, you have this HTTP traffic. It was a GET request to download an MP3 file. And you can see here there was a 200 OK response. Now from Wireshark, you can actually pull this uh, file out of the packet capture. And it's actually pretty simple to do. If you just come up here and go to File, uh, export objects and then click on HTTP and then just select your file save it of course I've already done it here but it's going to save out the mp3 file for you and if everything worked correctly if you go uh, back to where you saved it which I've got it in this Playtronics folder you should have an actual mp3 file that you can open and play uh, of course I can't do that for some reason I tried to do this earlier and the audio was not coming through on the recording but uh, when you run this mp3 file you hear a recording uh, and it says my name is Warner Brandes um, my voice is my passport verify which a couple of things here uh, Werner Brandes, of course, is another character from the movie Sneakers. And this is a uh, phrase that he uses in the movie. So this was our next clue. Now, since this specifically mentions him, I'm guessing that his, his name is going to be somehow used to log into SSH. The only thing that we don't know here is the format that the username is supposed to be in. So what I did, uh, this one here, I created another text file and I just put in some variations of, of his name and possible potential usernames that there could have been. So I'm, there's more variations you could have added, but these are the ones that I stuck in here. Now the other thing, what to use for passwords. You could use the RockU list. 
Uh, and that's probably something normally that I would start with. And I believe actually I did that before. I did not get any results back trying to uh, get him logged in. So here's where those MD5 hashes come into play. If you take the MD5 hashes that we've gathered from our flags up to this point, you can actually take those and copy them into Google and find out what the uh, what the hash is for. Uh, let me see. Which one do I save that? Uh, Skydog flags here. You can see I've already got I've got the first five flags in here already. So I just took these hashes, copied them, did a Google search for them. And this is the plain text that comes back for each one of these. So I took and made a list, uh, another text file, containing these words. Uh, these could be uh, potential passwords. And we're going to use those words to try to brute force SSH on this system. All right, so we're going to use Hydra to try the brute force. And I'll just go back and show you here quick. Um, I'm using this wiki IMDB text file that I created. Uh, this is going to be what we use as our password list. You can see I've got, uh, I've added those things from the flags. So I've got like Leroy Brown. Um, I think I've got your mother in here. Um, anyway, all of the words that were in those flags, I've added to this list as well. So let's close this out. Uh, you can go ahead and close Wireshark because we're finished with it. Let's minimize this. Let's clear the screen. All right, so now we're going to run Hydra against SSH and see if we can actually get logged into the box. So the command is going to be Hydra, tack capital L, because we're going to give it a list, and that was just the that Werner.txt. Remember, this is one that I just created different variations of Werner brand as his name. Uh, then we're going to do a tack capital P and use that wiki IMDB text file. And then give the address to the host or to our target and then specify that we're doing this against SSH. So we let that run. I'm probably going to pause the video and let this, because this will actually take a while to run through everything, since we have more than one uh, username that it's going to be trying against that list. All right, so it looks like Hydra has finished, and it actually did come back with a password, so we've got this is the username Warner Brandes all one all together and the password is Leroy Brown so now we're going to try to SSH in as him and see what access we've got so we'll do SSH Warner Brandes at three Type in the password, and we are in. You can see here, Skydog CTF. So we are now, uh, we've now got a shell on the box, or I should say we have SSH access to the box, as Warner Brandes. Let's just see quick. And, of course, he does not have privileged access. So now we have the task of enumerating the machine and um, seeing what we can find on here. All right, so I've cleared the screen. So the first thing that we're going to do is just look here in his home directory and see if there are any files in here that we can use. So let's just do a quick ls. And we can see we've got another flag file, so let's just cat this out and see what it contains. And it's another MD5 hash, so go ahead and 
Uh, just be sure you copy this out and save it in your notes. Uh, let's clear the screen. Uh, the next thing I'm going to look at is the Etsy password file. So, just look and see if there are any other accounts on the system. And everything looks pretty standard. The only other thing here is this Nemo account. Which we don't have any information on that right now. Uh, just keep that in your notes. We may come back to that later. And of course, I don't think we'll be able to read the shadow file. But we can try it anyway. Nope. So let's clear it again. And the next thing that I'm going to look at is the var www html directory. And just see if there are any other uh, directories on the, on the web server that we haven't gone to yet. So let's just change into that directory. Do another ls. And you can see we do have one new directory here. This congratulations you did it. So let me copy this and we'll go into it and see what it contains. I've got it here. I've already got it pulled up for you. It looks like it just contains this one mp4 file. And if we click on this and play it, it's just a clip from the Karate Kid. Which, I'm not sure exactly how this plays into the challenge yet. Um, kind of a nice, I guess, a, a bonus feature if you if you want to call it that. We can keep this in the back of our mind. So we did have one other directory to go into. So we still have one more flag to get. And I'm guessing that it's going to be in the root directory. Which means that we're going to have to find some way to elevate our privileges to gain access to it. Um, if you've never done any kind of privilege escalation on Linux, Got Milk has, has a good blog post that he did a couple of years ago that covers some of the more common things to look for uh, when you're doing privilege escalation. And I will have a link to that in the description below so you guys can check that out. He, uh, he actually offers several things that you can go through. Now, for this video, obviously, uh, like I said before, it's edited down for time's sake. I actually spent quite a lot of time uh, on this part of the challenge, just going through the system looking for anything that, uh, that would have been useful to get root access. One of the uh, privilege es escalation techniques that you can use is to search the system for any world writable files. So I can do that here. Let me clear this out again. Uh, actually, let me change back. So I I don't like it when the command line when the when the prompt gets too long. So we're going to use the find command, and it's just, uh, you just type in find. We're going to do a slash to look from the root uh, of the machine. Tag perm. Tag 2. We're going to do uh, type F for file. And then we're just going to send any errors to dev null. So let's see what this comes back with. And we have a lot of these uh, files under proc, which aren't very useful, at least at the moment. And we have this kernel uh, security app armor access file. Uh, come back here. And then we've got this log or lib log sanitizer.py file, which I'm not sure what that is. Uh, let's view the permissions on that directory and see if it's even anything that we can access. So if we just do lslh on lib log and you can see that we do have writes to that file. We have read, write, and execute permissions. So let's cat it out and just see what it contains. So, uh, need to put the directory or the full path to it. 
And it looks like just a simple Python script that executes an operating system command. So it looks like it's just clearing out the this temp directory. But here's the thing, since we've got access, we can modify this file. The file is being run by root. So we may be able to leverage this to execute a command for us that will give us root access on the box. So one of the things that we can do is to see if we can actually set the SUID bit on a shell that will uh, that we, th we can then execute and actually be running as a root shell on the box. So if we go back, let's, um, if we edit that sanitizer file, so let's just do, uh, just run nano liblog sanitizer. We want to come in here and change this command. Now in order to set the SUID bit, we're just going to use change mod, ch mod, we're going to do a U plus S, and then I'm going to execute it against bin SH. And then we're just going to save it. Now, the only thing that we don't know here is how often that script gets executed. I suppose we can. Let's... Um Let's go ahead and run it ourselves. Well, now if we do that, it's going to execute as our user. So if we give it a bit, then that file should run. And then we can look and see if we actually have access. Let me go ahead and clear the screen again. And then if we execute bin sh and let's just do an id quick and see what we got all right looks like it worked and you can see here we have the effective user id of root so now we should be able to go into the root directory ls looks like Let's do an LSALH quick just to see everything that's here. So we've got this other directory, Black Box, which again is another reference to the movie. So let's go into that directory. And looks like we found our, uh, our last flag. Let's cut it out and see what it says. All right, we have our other MD5 hash. And then we've got this message here. And of course, Martin Bishop is the main character from the movie. So that's really, that's the end of this challenge, guys. Uh, we were able to get all six flags. Uh, we got root access. And I had fun with this one. Uh, with it incorporating the theme of sneakers for the clues and the flags and things. Uh, that's what made this challenge more fun for me. Uh, like I said before, if you haven't seen the movie, check it out when you get a chance. Uh, I thought it was pretty good, and it it has become one of those kind of must-watch movies in the uh, hacker culture. It usually comes up in conversation, at least. I know the guys that I work with, they usually talk about it in, in some form or fashion. So, as always with these videos, I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, I've been getting a lot of requests to do more boot to root challenges, so I'm going to be adding more of those as I, as I get time. Um, and as I said before, too, with these videos, you guys are only seeing the end result in, in the actual video content. Um, but the actual process for me to, to finish this machine actually took quite a bit of time. You know, it wasn't just sitting down, busting it out in an hour and, and finished with it. It actually took me uh, a few days. Of course, that wasn't working on it nonstop for those few days. It was just when I, when I was able to get to it. But the parts, especially like with the, the OSINT piece of it, uh, the privilege escalation part, 
those sections probably took me the longest out of anything on here. So hopefully with um, everything that I showed you here, it's going to kind of spark creativity for you uh, when you approach a machine and kind of get you thinking outside of the box uh, when you're doing a test. So as always, guys, I appreciate the support you're giving. Uh, if you do have any questions or comments, just leave them below. And as always, guys, I hope you have an awesome day. Talk to you later. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if it's your first time here, I would love if you subscribe to the channel and share it out with all of your friends. So my hope is to build a community where we can help each other learn and grow in security, especially if you're just getting into it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And again, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you all have an awesome day. See you guys.